karaoke books. Boris Godunov. Alexander Pushkin. Translated by Alfred Hayes. Play. Audiobook. Introduction. Pushkin wrote Boris Godunov while in exile, never to be performed during his lifetime. The history play, later to be the basis of modest Mussorgsky's operatic masterpiece, begins in 1598 with the election of Godunov as Tsar. After the death of Fyodor, the son of Ivan the Terrible and the last Rurikid Tsar of Russia. Godunov had been the regent for Fyodor and had Fyodor's younger brother killed, but rumors persisted that the younger brother, Dmitri, had somehow survived. An ambitious young monk Gregory hears of these rumors and decides to grab the throne with the help of the Polish army, waiting for any excuse to invade Russia. The resulting, time of troubles, caused the worst political crisis of Russia until the 20th century, ultimately leading to the rule of the Romanovs. Pushkin was inspired by Shakespeare's history, and this masterful play equals the great bard in its discussion of power, corruption, and the rule of law. The play offers a wealth of interpretation and thought about the relationship between rulers and the people, ambition and piety, and Russia and its future. The work is a fascinating read about this terrible time in Russian history by its most celebrated artist. Daniel Pratt. Palace of the Kremlin. Prince Shusky and Voratinsky. Voratinsky. To keep the city's peace, that is the task. Entrusted to us twain, but you forsooth. Have little need to watch, Moscow is empty. The people to the monastery have flocked. After the patriarch. What thinkest thou? How will this trouble end? Shusky. How will it end? That is not hard to tell. A little more. The multitude will groan and wail, Boris. Pucker a while his forehead, like a toper. Eyeing a glass of wine, and in the end. Will humbly of his graciousness consent. To take the crown, and then, and then will rule us. Just as before. Voratinsky. A month has flown already. Since, cloistered with his sister, he forsook. The world's affairs. None hitherto hath shaken. His purpose, not the patriarch, not the boyars. His counselors, their tears, their prayers he heeds not. Deaf as he to the wail of Moscow, deaf. To the great council's voice, vainly they urged. The sorrowful nun queen to consecrate. Boris to sovereignty, firm was his sister. Inexorable as he, methinks Boris. Inspired her with this spirit. What if our ruler? Be sick in very deed of cares of state. And hath no strength to mount the throne? What? Sayst thou? Shusky. I say that in that case the blood in vain. Flowed of the young Tsarevich, that Dmitri. Might just as well be living. Voratinsky. Fearful crime. Is it beyond all doubt Boris contrived? The young boy's murder? Isoblicit Sakritigo Zelodia. Shusky. Who besides? Who else? Bribed Chepchugov in vain? Who sent in secret? The brothers Bityagovsky with Kachalov? Myself was sent to Uglich, there to probe. This matter on the spot. Fresh traces there. I found. The whole town bore witness to the crime. With one accord the burghers all affirmed it. And with a single word, when I returned. I could have proved the secret villain's guilt. Voratinsky. Why didst thou then not crush him? Shusky. At the time. I do confess, his unexpected calmness. His shamelessness, dismayed me. Honestly. He looked me in the eyes, he questioned me closely, and I repeated to his face. The foolish tale himself had whispered to me. Voratinsky. An ugly business, Prince. Shusky. What could I do? Declare all to Fyodor? But the Tsar. Saw all things with the eyes of Godunov. Heard all things with the ears of Godunov. Grant even that I might have fully proved it. Boris would have denied it there and then. And I should have been haled away to prison. And in good time, like mine own uncle, strangled. Within the silence of some deaf-walled dungeon. 
I boast not when I say that, given occasion. No penalty affrights me. I am no coward, but also am no fool, and do not choose. Of my free will to walk into a halter. Voratinsky. Monstrous misdeed. Listen, I warrant you. Remorse already gnaws the murderer. Be sure the blood of that same innocent child will hinder him from mounting to the throne. Shusky. That will not balk him. Boris is not so timid. What honor for ourselves, I, for all Russia. A slave of yesterday, a Tartar, son. By marriage of Maliuda, of a hangman. Himself in soul a hangman, he'd aware. The crown and robe of Monomak. Voratinsky. You are right. He is of lowly birth, we twain can boast. A nobler lineage. Shusky. Indeed we may. Voratinsky. Let us remember, Shusky, Voratinsky. Are, let me say, born princes. Shusky. Yea, born princes. And of the blood of Rurik. Voratinsky. Listen, prince. Then we, twould seem, should have the right to mount. Theodor's throne. Shusky. Rather than Godunov. Voratinsky. In very truth, twould seem so. Shusky. And what then? If still Boris pursue his crafty ways, let us contrive by skillful means to rouse the people. Let them turn from Godunov. Princes they have in plenty of their own. Let them from out their number choose a czar. Voratinsky. Of us, Varyags in blood, there are full many. But tis no easy thing for us to vie. With Godunov, the people are not wont to recognize in us an ancient branch of their old warlike masters, long already. Have we our appanages forfeited, long served but as lieutenants of the Tsars? And he hath known, by fear, and love, and glory, how to bewitch the people. Shusky, looking through a window, he has dared. That's all, while we, enough of this. Thou seest. Dispersedly the people are returning. We'll go forthwith and learn what is resolved. The red square. The people. First person. He is inexorable. He thrust from him. Prelates, boyars, and patriarch, in vain. Prostrate they fall, the splendor of the throne. Affrights him. Second person. Oh, my God, who is to rule us? Oh, woe to us. Third person. See. The chief minister is coming out to tell us what the council has now resolved. The people. Silence. Silence. He speaks. The minister of state. Hush, hush. Give ear. Shelkalov. From the red balcony. The council have resolved for the last time. To put to proof the power of supplication. Upon our ruler's mournful soul. At dawn. After a solemn service in the Kremlin. The blessed patriarch will go, preceded, by sacred banners, with the holy icons, of Donsky and Vladimir, with him go, the council, courtiers, delegates, boyars, and all the orthodox folk of Moscow, all, will go to pray once more the queen to pity, fatherless Moscow, and to consecrate, Boris unto the crown, now to your homes, go ye in peace, pray, and to heaven shall rise. The heart's petition of the Orthodox. The people disperse. The virgin's field. The new nunnery. The people. First person. To plead with the Tsaritsa in her cell. Now are they gone. Thither have gone Boris. The patriarch, and a host of boyars. Second person. What news? Third person. Still as he obdurate, yet there is hope. Peasant woman. With a child. Drat you. Stop crying, or else the bogeyman. Will carry you off. Drat you, drat you. Stop crying. First person. Can't we slip through behind the fence? Second person. Impossible. No chance at all. Not only is the nunnery. Crowded. The precincts too are crammed with people. Look what a sight. All Moscow has thronged here. 
c. fences, roofs, and every single story of the cathedral bell tower, the church domes. The very crosses are studded thick with people. First person. A goodly sight indeed. Second person. What is that noise? Third person. Listen. What noise is that? The people groaned. See there. They fall like waves, row upon row. Again, again. Now, brother, tis our turn. Be quick, down on your knees. The people. On their knees, groaning and wailing. Have pity on us. Our Father. Oh, rule over us. Oh, be. Father to us, and Tsar. First person. Sato voce. Why are they wailing? Second person. How can we know? The boyars know well enough. It's not our business. Peasant woman. With child. Now, what's this? Just when. It ought to cry. The child stops crying. I'll show you. Here comes the bogeyman. Cry, cry, you spoilt one. Throws it on the ground. The child screams. That's right, that's right. First person. As everyone is crying. We also, brother, will begin to cry. Second person. Brother, I try my best, but can't. First person. Nor I. Have you not got an onion? Second person. No, I'll wet. My eyes with spittle. What's up there now? First person. Who knows? What's going on? The people. The crown for him. He is Tsar. He has yielded. Boris. Our Tsar. Long live Boris. The palace of the Kremlin. Boris, patriarch, boyars. Boris. Thou, father patriarch, all ye boyars. My soul lies bare before you. Ye have seen. With what humility and fear I took. This mighty power upon me. Ah! How heavy! My weight of obligation. I succeed. The great Ivans, succeed the angel Tsar. Dash! O righteous father, king of kings, look down. From heaven upon the tears of thy true servants. And send on him whom thou hast loved, whom thou. Exalted hast on earth so wondrously. Thy holy blessing. May I rule my people. In glory, and like thee be good and righteous. To you, boyars, I look for help. Serve me. As ye served him, what time I shared your labors. Ere I was chosen by the people's will. Boyars. We will not from our plighted oath depart. Boris. Now let us go to kneel before the tombs. Of Russia's great departed rulers. Then. Bid summon all our people to a feast. All, from the noble to the poor blind beggar. To all free entrance, all most welcome guests. Exit, the boyars following. Prince Voratinsky. Stopping Shusky. You rightly guessed. Shusky. Guessed what? Voratinsky. Why, you remember. The other day, here on this very spot. Shusky. No, I remember nothing. Voratinsky. When the people. Flocked to the virgin's field, thou saidst. Shusky. Tis not. The time for recollection. There are times. When I should counsel you not to remember. But even to forget. And for the rest. I sought but by feigned calumny to prove thee. The trulier to discern thy secret thoughts. But see. The people hail the Tsar, my absence. May be remarked. I'll join them. Voratinsky. Wily courtier. Knight. Cell in the monastery of Chudov, A.D. 1603. Father Pomen, Gregory, sleeping. Pomen. Writing in front of a sacred lamp. One more, the final record, and my annals. Are ended, and fulfilled the duty laid. By God on me a sinner. Not in vain. Hath God appointed me for many years. A witness, teaching me the art of letters. A day will come when some laborious monk will bring to light my zealous, nameless toil. Kindle, as I, his lamp, and from the parchment, shaking the dust of ages will transcribe. 
my true narrations, that posterity, the bygone fortunes of the Orthodox, of their own land may learn, will mention make, of their great czars, their labors, glory, goodness, and humbly for their sins, their evil deeds, implore the Savior's mercy. In old age, I live anew, the past unrolls before me. Dash. Did it in years long vanished sweep along, full of events, and troubled like the deep? Now it is hushed and tranquil. Few the faces, which memory hath saved for me, and few. The words which have come down to me, the rest, have perished, never to return. But day, draws near, the lamp burns low, one record more. The last, he writes, Gregory, waking, ever the selfsame dream. Is tea possible? For the third time, a cursed dream, and ever, before the lamp sits the old man and writes, and not all night, twould seem, from drowsiness, hath closed his eyes. I love the peaceful sight, when, with his soul deep in the past immersed, he keeps his chronicle. Oft have I longed, to guess what tis he writes of, is T perchance, the dark dominion of the Tartars? Is it, Ivan's grim punishments, the stormy council, of Novgorod? Is it about the glory, of our dear fatherland? I ask in vain, not on his lofty brow, nor in his looks. May one peruse his secret thoughts, always. The same aspect, lowly at once, and lofty. Like some state minister grown grey in office. Calmly alike he contemplates the just. And guilty, with indifference he hears. Evil and good, and knows not wrath nor pity. Pamen. Wackest thou, brother? Gregory. Honored father, give me. Thy blessing. Pamen. May God bless thee on this day, tomorrow, and forever. Gregory, all night long, thou hast been writing and abstained from sleep. While demon visions have disturbed my peace, the fiend molested me. I dreamed I scaled, by winding stairs a turret, from whose height, Moscow appeared an anthill, where the people, seethed in the squares below and pointed at me, with laughter. Shame and terror came upon me, and falling headlong, I awoke. Three times. I dreamed the selfsame dream. Is it not strange? Pamen. Tis the young blood at play, humble thyself. By prayer and fasting, and thy slumber's visions, will all be filled with lightness. Hitherto. If I, unwillingly by drowsiness, weakened, make not at night long orisons. My old man's sleep is neither calm nor sinless. Now riotous feasts appear, now camps of war, scuffles of battle, fatuous diversions, of youthful years. Gregory, how joyfully didst thou live out thy youth, the fortress of Kazan. Thou foutst beneath, with Shusky didst repulse, the army of Litva. Thou hast seen the court, and splendor of Ivan. Ah, happy thou, whilst I, from boyhood up, a wretched monk, wander from cell to cell. Why unto me, was it not given to play the game of war, to revel at the table of a czar? Then, like to thee, would I in my old age, have gladly from the noisy world withdrawn, to vow myself a dedicated monk, and in the quiet cloister end my days. Pamen. Complain not, brother, that the sinful world, thou early didst forsake, that few temptations, the All-Highest sent to thee. Believe my words, the glory of the world, its luxury, woman's seductive love, seen from afar, enslave our souls. Long have I lived, have taken, delight in many things, but never knew, true bliss until that season when the Lord, guided me to the cloister. Think, my son, on the great czars, who loftier than they, God only, who dares thwart them, none. What then? Often the golden crown became to them, a burden, for a cowl they bartered it. The czar Ivan sought in monastic toil, tranquility, 
his palace, filled erewhile, with haughty minions, grew to all appearance. A monastery, the very rake hells seemed. Obedient monks, the terrible czar appeared. A pious abbot. Here, in this very cell. At that time Cyril, the much-suffering. A righteous man, dwelt in it, even me. God then made comprehend the nothingness. Of worldly vanities, here I beheld. Weary of angry thoughts and executions. The czar, among us, meditative, quiet. Here sat the terrible, we motionless. Stood in his presence, while he talked with us. In tranquil tones. Thus spake he to the abbot. And all the brothers, my fathers, soon will come. The longed for day, here shall I stand before you. Hungering for salvation, Nicodemus. Thou Sergius, Cyril thou, will all accept. My spiritual vow, to you I soon shall come. Accursed in sin, here the clean habit take. Prostrate, most holy father, at thy feet. So spake the sovereign Lord, and from his lips. Sweetly the accents flowed. He wept, and we, with tears prayed God to send his love and peace. Upon his suffering and stormy soul. Dash. What of his son Theodor? On the throne. He sighed to lead the life of calm devotion. The royal chambers to a cell of prayer. He turned, wherein the heavy cares of state. Vexed not his holy soul. God grew to love. The Tsar's humility, in his good days. Russia was blessed with glory undisturbed. And in the hour of his decease was wrought. A miracle unheard of, at his bedside. Seen by the Tsar alone, appeared a being. Exceeding bright, with whom Theodor, gone. To commune, calling him great patriarch. And all around him were possessed with fear. Musing upon the vision sent from heaven. Since at that time the patriarch was not present. In church before the Tsar. And when he died. The palace was with holy fragrance filled. And like the sun his countenance outshone. Never again shall we see such a Tsar. Oh, horrible, appalling woe. We have sinned. We have angered God. We have chosen for our ruler. A Tsar's assassin. Gregory. Honored father, long. Have I desired to ask thee of the death of young Dmitri, the Tsarevich, thou? Tis said, wast then at Uglich. Pamen. I, my son, I well remember. God it was who led me to witness that ill deed, that bloody sin. I at that time was sent to distant Uglich. Upon some mission, I arrived at night. Next morning, at the hour of Holy Mass, I heard upon a sudden a bell toll. Twas the alarm bell. Then a cry, an uproar. Men rushing to the court of the Saritsa. Thither I haste, and there had flocked already. All uglich. There I see the young Tsarevich. Lie slaughtered. The queen mother in a swoon. Bowed over him, his nurse in her despair. Wailing, and then the maddened people drag. The godless, treacherous nurse away appears. Suddenly in their midst, wild, pale with rage. Judas Bidiagovsky. There, there's the villain. Shout on all sides the crowd, and in a trice. He was no more. Straightway the people rushed. On the three fleeing murderers, they seized. The hiding miscreants and led them up. To the child's corpse yet warm, when lo. A marvel. The dead child all at once began to tremble. Confess, the people thundered, and in terror. Beneath the axe the villains did confess. And named Boris. Gregory. How many summers lived? The murdered boy? Pamen. Seven summers, he would now. Since then have passed ten years, nay, more twelve years. He would have been of equal age to thee. And would have reigned, but God deemed otherwise. This is the lamentable tale wherewith. My chronicle doth end, since then I little. Have dipped in worldly business. Brother Gregory. Thou hast illumined thy mind by earnest study. To thee I hand my task. In hours exempt. From the soul's exercise, do thou record. Not subtly reasoning, 
all things whereto thou shalt in life be witness, war and peace, the sway of kings, the holy miracles, of saints, all prophecies and heavenly signs. For me tis time to rest and quench my lamp. But hark! The maiden bell. Bless, Lord, thy servants. Give me my crutch. Exit. Gregory. Boris, Boris, before thee. All tremble. None dares even to remind thee. Of what befell the hapless child, meanwhile. Here in dark cell a hermit doth indict. Thy stern denunciation. Thou wilt not. Escape the judgment even of this world. As thou wilt not escape the doom of God. Fence of the monastery. Gregory and a wicked monk. Gregory. Oh, what a weariness is our poor life. What misery. Day comes, day goes, and ever. Is seen, is heard one thing alone, one sees. Only black cassocks, only hears the bell. Yawning by day you wander, wander, nothing. To do, you doze, the whole night long till daylight. The poor monk lies awake, and when in sleep. You lose yourself, black dreams disturb the soul. Glad that they sound the bell, that with a crutch. They rouse you. No, I will not suffer it. I cannot. Through this fence I'll flee. The world. Is great, my path is on the highways never. Thou'll hear of me again. Monk. Truly your life. Is but a sorry one, ye dissolute. Wicked young monks. Gregory. Would that the Khan again. Would come upon us, or Lithuania rise. Once more in insurrection. Good. I would then. Cross swords with them. Or what if the Tsarevich. Should suddenly arise from out the grave. Should cry, where are ye, children, faithful servants? Help me against Boris, against my murderer. Seize my foe, lead him to me. Monk. Enough, my friend. Of empty babble. We cannot raise the dead. No, clearly it was fated otherwise. For the Tsarevich, but hearken, if you wish. To do a thing, then do it. Gregory. What to do? Monk. If I were young as thou, if these gray hairs. Had not already streaked my beard, dust take me? Gregory. Not I. Monk. Hearken. Our folk are dull of brain. Easy of faith, and glad to be amazed. By miracles and novelties. The boyars. Remember Godunov as erst he was. Peer to themselves, and even now the race. Of the old Varyags as loved by all. Thy years. Match those of the Tsarevich. If thou hast. Cunning and hardihood. Dost take me now? Gregory. I take thee. Monk. Well, what sayst thou? Gregory. Tis resolved. I am Dmitri, I Tsarevich. Monk. Give me thy hand, my bold young friend. Thou shalt be Tsar, palace of the Patriarch. Patriarch, abbot of the Chudov Monastery. Patriarch. And he has run away, Father Abbot? Abbot. He has run away, Holy Sovereign, now three days ago. Patriarch. Accursed rascal. What is his origin? Abbot. Of the family of the Otrepievs, of the lower nobility. Of Galicia, in his youth he took the tonsure, no one knows where, lived at Suzdal, in the Efemievsky monastery, departed from there, wandered to various convents, finally arrived at my Chudov fraternity. But I, seeing that he was still young and inexperienced, entrusted him at the outset to Father Pomen, an old man, kind and humble. And he was very learned, read our chronicle composed canons for the holy brethren, but, to be sure, instruction was not given to him from the Lord God, Patriarch. Ah, those learned fellows. What a thing to say, I shall be Tsar in Moscow. Ah, he is a vessel of the devil. However, it is no use even to report to the Tsar about this. Why disquiet our father sovereign? It will be enough to give information about his flight to the secretary Smirnov or the secretary Efemiev. 
What a heresy. I shall be Tsar in Moscow. Catch. Catch the fawning villain, and send him to Solovetsky to perpetual penance. But this, is it not? Heresy, Father Abbot? Abbot. Heresy, Holy Patriarch. Downright heresy. Palace of the Tsar. Two attendants. First attendant. Where is the sovereign? Second attendant. In his bedchamber. Where he is closeted with some magician. First attendant. I. That's the kind of intercourse he loves. Sorcerers, fortune tellers, necromancers. Ever he seeks to dip into the future. Just like some pretty girl. Fain would I know. What tis he would foretell. Second attendant. Well, here he comes. Will it please you question him? First attendant. How grim he looks. Exeunt. Tsar. Enters. I have attained the highest power. Six years. Already have I reigned in peace, but joy. Dwells not within my soul. Even so in youth. We greedily desire the joys of love. But only quell the hunger of the heart. With momentary possession. We grow cold. Grow weary and oppressed. In vain the wizards. Promise me length of days, days of dominion. Immune from treachery, not power, not life. Gladden me, I forebode the wrath of heaven. And woe. For me no happiness. I thought. To satisfy my people in contentment. In glory, gain their love by generous gifts. But I have put away that empty hope. The power that lives is hateful to the mob. Only the dead they love. We are but fools. When our heart vibrates to the people's groans. And passionate wailing. Lately on our land. God sent a famine. Perishing in torments. The people uttered moan. The granaries. I made them free of. Scattered gold among them. Found labor for them. Furious for my pains. They cursed me. Next, a fire consumed their homes. I built for them new dwellings, then forsooth. They blamed me for the fire. Such is the mob. Such is its judgment. Seek its love, indeed. I thought within my family to find. Solace. I thought to make my daughter happy. By wedlock. Like a tempest death took off. Her bridegroom, and at once a stealthy rumor. Pronounced me guilty of my daughter's grief. Me, me, the hapless father. Whoso dies. I am the secret murderer of all. I hastened Theodore's end, twas I that poisoned. My sister queen, the lowly nun, all I. Ah! Now I feel it, naught can give us peace. Mid-worldly cares, nothing save only conscience. Healthy she triumphs over wickedness. Over dark slander, but if in her be found, a single casual stain, then misery. With what a deadly sore my soul doth smart. My heart, with venom filled, doth like a hammer. Beat in mine ears reproach. All things revolt me. And my head whirls, and in my eyes are children. Dripping with blood, and gladly would I flee. But nowhere can find refuge, horrible. Pitiful he whose conscience is unclean. Tavern on the Lithuanian frontier. Missale and Varlam, wandering friars, Gregory in secular attire, hostess. Hostess. With what shall I regale you, my reverend? Honored guests? Varlam. With what God sends, little hostess. Have you? No wine? Hostess. As if I had not, my father's. I will bring it at. Once. Exit. Missale. Why so glum, comrade? Here is that very Lithuanian frontier which you so wish to reach. Gregory. Until I shall be in Lithuania, till then I shall not. Be content. Varlam. What is it that makes you so fond of Lithuania? Here are we, Father Misael and I, a sinner, when we fled. From the monastery, then we cared for nothing. Was it Lithuania, was it Russia, was it Fiddle, was it Dulcimer? All the same for us, if only there was wine. That's the main thing. Missale. Well said, Father Varlam. Hostess. 
enters. There you are, my fathers. Drink to your health. Miss Ale. Thanks, my good friend. God bless thee. Thee. Monks drink. Varlam trolls a ditty. Thou passest. By, my dear, etc. To Gregory. Why don't you join? In the song? Not even join in the song? Gregory. I don't wish to. Miss Ale. Everyone to his liking. Varlam. But a tipsy man's in heaven. Father Miss Ale. We will drink a glass to our hostess. Sings. Where? The brave lad endurance, etc. Still, Father Miss Ale. When I am drinking, then I don't like sober men. Tipsiness. Is one thing, but pride quite another. If you want. To live as we do, you are welcome. No? Then take. Yourself off. Away with you. A mountebank is no. Companion for a priest. Gregory. Drink, and keep your thoughts to yourself. Father Varlam. You see, I too sometimes know how. To make puns. Varlam. But why should I keep my thoughts to myself? Miss Ale. Let him alone, Father Varlam. Varlam. But what sort of a fasting man is he? Of his. Own accord he attached himself as a companion to us. No one knows who he is, no one knows whence he comes. And yet he gives himself grand airs, perhaps he has a close acquaintance with the pillory. Drinks and sings. A young monk took the tonsure, etc. Gregory. To hostess. Whither leads this road? Hostess. To Lithuania, my dear, to the Luyov Mountains. Gregory. And is it far to the Luyov Mountains? Hostess. Not far. You might get there by evening, but for the Tsar's frontier barriers, and the captains of the guard. Gregory. What say you? Barriers. What means this? Hostess. Someone has escaped from Moscow, and orders have been given to detain and search everyone. Gregory. Aside. Here's a pretty mess. Varlam. Hello, comrade. You've been making up to mine hostess. To be sure you don't want vodka, but you want a young woman. All right, brother, all right. Everyone has his own ways, and Father Missail and I have only one thing which we care for. We drink to the bottom, we drink, turn it upside down, and knock at the bottom. Missail. Well said, Father Varlam. Gregory. To hostess. Whom do they want? Who? Escaped from Moscow? Hostess. God knows. A thief perhaps, a robber. But here. Even good folk are worried now. And what will come of? It? Nothing. They will not catch the old devil, as if. There were no other road into Lithuania than the highway. Just turn to the left from here, then by the pine wood. Or by the footpath as far as the chapel on the. Chikansky Brook and then straight across the marsh to Klopin, and thence to Zakariev, and then any child will guide you to the Luyov Mountains. The only good of these inspectors is to worry passers-by and rob us poor folk. A noise is heard, what's that? Ah, there. They are, curse them. They are going their rounds. Gregory. Hostess. Is there another room in the cottage? Hostess. No, my dear, I should be glad myself to hide. But they are only pretending to go their rounds, but. Give them wine and bread, and heaven knows what. May perdition take them, the accursed ones. May. Enter officers. Officers. Good health to you, mine hostess. Hostess. You are kindly welcome, dear guests. An officer. To another. Ha, huh, there's drinking going on. Here, we shall get something here. To the monks. Who are you? Varlam. We, are two old clerics, humble monks, we are. Going from village to village, and collecting Christian. Alms for the monastery. Officer. To Gregory. And thou? Miss Ale. Our comrade. Gregory. A layman from the suburb, I have conducted the. 
old men as far as the frontier. From here I am going to my own home. Miss Ale. So you have changed your mind? Gregory. Sato voce. Be silent. Officer. Hostess, bring some more wine, and we will drink here a little and talk a little with these old men. Second officer. Sato voce. Yon lad, it appears, is poor. There's nothing to be got out of him, on the other hand. The old men. First officer. Be silent, we shall come to them presently. Well, my fathers, how are you getting on? Varlam. Badly, my sons, badly. The Christians have. Now turned stingy, they love their money, they hide. Their money. They give little to God. The people of. The world have become great sinners. They have all. Devoted themselves to commerce, to earthly cares, they. Think of worldly wealth, not of the salvation of the soul. You walk and walk, you beg and beg, sometimes in. Three days begging will not bring you three half pence. What a sin. A week goes by, another week, you look. Into your bag, and there is so little in it that you are. Ashamed to show yourself at the monastery. What are. You to do? From very sorrow you drink away what is. Left. A real calamity. Ah, it is bad. It seems our last. Days have come. Hostess. Weeps. God pardon and save you. During the course of Varlam's speech the first officer watches Miss Ale significantly. First officer. Alexis. Have you the Tsar's edict with you? Second officer. I have it. First officer. Give it here. Miss Ale. Why do you look at me so fixedly? First officer. This is why, from Moscow there has fled a certain wicked heretic, Grishka Otrepiev. Have you heard this? Miss Ale. I have not heard it. Officer. Not heard it? Very good. And the Tsar has ordered to arrest and hang the fugitive heretic. Do you know this? Miss Ale. I do not know it. Officer. To Varlam. Do you know how to read? Varlam. In my youth I knew how, but I have forgotten. Officer. To Miss Ale. And thou? Miss Ale. God has not made me wise. Officer. So then here's the Tsar's edict. Miss Ale. What do I want it for? Officer. It seems to me that this fugitive heretic, thief, swindler, is, thou. Miss Ale. I? Good gracious. What are you talking about? Officer. Stay. Hold the doors. Then we shall soon get. At the truth. Hostess. Oh the cursed tormentors. Not to leave even the. Old man in peace. Officer. Which of you here as a scholar? Gregory. Comes forward. I am a scholar. Officer. Oh, indeed. And from whom did you learn? Gregory. From our sacristan. Officer, gives him the edict. Read it aloud. Gregory. Reads. An unworthy monk of the monastery. Of Chudov, Gregory, of the family of Otrepiev, has fallen. Into heresy, taught by the devil, and has dared to vex. The holy brotherhood by all kinds of iniquities and acts. Of lawlessness. And, according to information, it has been shown that he, the accursed Grishka, has fled to the Lithuanian frontier. Officer. To Miss Ale. How can it be anyone but you? Gregory. And the Tsar has commanded to arrest him. Officer. And to hang. Gregory. It does not say here, to hang. Officer. Thou liest. What is meant is not always put into writing. Read. To arrest and to hang. Gregory. And to hang. And the age of the thief. Grishka, looking at Varlam, about fifty, and his. Height medium. He has a bald head, gray beard, fat. Belly. All glance at Varlam. First officer. My lads. Here is Grishka. Hold him. Bind him. I never thought to catch him so quickly. Varlam. 
snatching the paper. Hands off, my lads. What sort of a Grishka am I? What? Fifty years old. Gray beard, fat belly. No, brother. You're too young. To play off tricks on me. I have not read for a long time. And I make it out badly, but I shall manage to make it. Out, as it's a hanging matter. Spells it out, and his. Age 20. Why, brother, where does it say 50? Dash. Do you see, 20? Second officer. Yes, I remember, 20. Even so it was. Told us. First officer. To Gregory. Then, evidently, you like a. Joke, brother. During the reading Gregory stands with downcast head, and his hand in his breast. Varlam. Continues. And in stature he is small, chest. Broad. One arm shorter than the other, blue eyes, red. Hair, a wart on his cheek, another on his forehead. Then is it not you, my friend? Gregory suddenly draws a dagger. All give way before him, he dashes through the window. Officers. Hold him. Hold him. All run out in disorder. Moscow. Shusky's house. Shusky. A number of guests. Supper. Shusky. More wine. Now, my dear guests. He rises. All rise after him. The final draft. Read the prayer, boy. Boy. Lord of the heavens, who art. Eternally and everywhere, except. The prayer of us thy servants. For our monarch. By thee appointed, for our pious czar. Of all good Christians autocrat, we pray. Preserve him in the palace, on the field. Of battle, on his knightly couch. Grant to him. Victory o'er his foes, from sea to sea. May he be glorified, may all his house. Blossom with health, and may its precious branches. O'ershadow all the earth, to us, his slaves. May he, as heretofore, be generous. Gracious, long-suffering, and may the founts of his unfailing wisdom flow upon us, raising the royal cup, Lord of the heavens. For this we pray. Shusky. Drinks. Long live our mighty sovereign. Farewell, dear guests. I thank you that ye scorn not. My bread and salt. Farewell. Good night. Exeunt guests. He conducts them to the door. Pushkin. Hardly could they tear themselves away, indeed. Prince Vasily Ivanovich, I began to think that we should not succeed in getting any private talk. Shusky. To the servants. You there, why do you stand? Gaping? Always eavesdropping on gentlemen. Clear. The table, and then be off. Exeunt servants. What is it, Athanasius? Mikhailovich? Pushkin. Such a wondrous thing. A message was sent here to me today. From Krakow by my nephew Gabriel Pushkin. Shusky. Well? Pushkin. Tis strange news my nephew writes. The son. Of the terrible, but stay. Goes to the door and examines it. The royal boy. Who murdered was by order of Boris. Shusky. But these are no new tidings. Pushkin. Wait a little. Dmitri lives. Shusky. So that's it. News indeed. Dmitri living. Really marvelous. And is that all? Pushkin. Pray listen to the end. Whoe'er he be, whether he be Dmitri. Rescued, or else some spirit in his shape. Some daring rogue, some insolent pretender. In any case Dmitri has appeared. Shusky. It cannot be. Pushkin. Pushkin himself beheld him. When first he reached the court, and through the ranks. Of Lithuanian gentlemen went straight. Into the secret chamber of the king. Shusky. What kind of man? Whence comes he? Pushkin. No one knows. Tis known that he was Vishnevetsky's servant. That to a ghostly father on a bed. Of sickness he disclosed himself, possessed. Of this strange secret, his proud master nursed him. From his sick bed upraised him, and straightway. Took him to Sigismund. Shusky. 
And what say men? Of this bold fellow? Pushkin. Tis said that he is wise. Affable, cunning, popular with all men. He has bewitched the fugitives from Moscow. The Catholic priests see eye to eye with him. The king caresses him, and, it is said, has promised help. Shusky. All this is such a medley. That my head whirls. Brother, beyond all doubt. This man is a pretender, but the danger. Is, I confess, not slight. This is grave news. And if it reach the people, then there'll be. A mighty tempest. Pushkin. Such a storm that hardly. Will Tsar Boris contrive to keep the crown. Upon his clever head, and losing it. Will get but his deserts. He governs us. As did the Tsar Ivan of evil memory. What profits it that public executions. Have ceased, that we no longer sing in public. Hymns to Christ Jesus on the field of blood. That we no more are burnt in public places. Or that the Tsar no longer with his scepter. Rakes in the ashes? Is there any safety? In our poor life? Each day disgrace awaits us. The dungeon or Siberia, cowl or fetters. And then in some deaf nook a starving death. Or else the halter. Where are the most renowned? Of all our houses, where the Sitsky princes? Where are the Shustanovs, where the Romanovs? Hope of our fatherland? Imprisoned, tortured, in exile. Do but wait, and a like fate. Will soon be thine. Think of it. Here at home. Just as in Lithuania, we're beset. By treacherous slaves, and tongues are ever ready. For base betrayal, thieves bribed by the state. We hang upon the word of the first servant. Whom we may please to punish. Then he bethought him. To take from us our privilege of hiring. Our serfs at will, we are no longer masters. Of our own lands. Presume not to dismiss. An idler. Willy-nilly, thou must feed him. Presume not to outbid a man in hiring. A laborer, or you will find yourself. In the court's clutches, was such an evil heard of. Even under Tsar Ivan? And are the people the better off? Ask them. Let the pretender. But promise them the old free right of transfer. Then there'll be sport. Shusky. Thou art right, but be advised. Of this, of all things, for a time we'll speak. No word. Pushkin. Assuredly, keep thine own counsel. Thou art a person of discretion, always. I am glad to commune with thee. And if aught at any time disturbs me, I endure not to keep it from thee, and, truth to tell, thy mead and velvet ale today have so untied my tongue. Farewell then, Prince Shusky. Brother, farewell. Farewell, my brother, till we meet again. He escorts Pushkin out. Palace of the Tsar. The Tsarevich is drawing a map. The Tsarevna. The nurse of the Tsarevna, Senya, kisses a portrait. My dear bridegroom, comely, son of a king, not to me wast thou given, not to thy affianced bride, but to a dark sepulchre in a strange land. Never shall I take comfort, ever shall I weep for thee, nurse. A, Tsarevna, a maiden weeps as the dew falls. The sun will rise, will dry the dew. Thou wilt have another bridegroom, and handsome and affable. My charming child, thou wilt learn to love him, thou wilt forget Ivan the king's son, Senya. Nay, nurse, I will be true to him even in death. Boris enters. Tsar. What, Senya? What, my sweet one? In thy girlhood. Already a woe-stricken widow, ever bewailing thy dead bridegroom. Fate forbade me to be the author of thy bliss. Perchance, I angered heaven, it was not mine to compass thy happiness. Innocent one, for what? Art thou a sufferer? And thou, my son, with what art thou employed? What's this? Theater. A chart. Of all the land of Muscovy, our Tsardom. From end to end, 
Here you see, there is Moscow. There Novgorod, there Astrakhan. Here lies the sea, here the dense forest tract of Perm. And here Siberia. Tsar. And what is this? Which makes a winding pattern here? Theater. That is. The Volga. Tsar. Very good. Here's the sweet fruit. Of learning. One can view as from the clouds. Our whole dominion at a glance. Its frontiers. Its towns, its rivers. Learn, my son. Tis science. Which gives to us an abstract of the events. Of our swift flowing life. Some day, perchance. Soon, all the lands which thou so cunningly. Today hast drawn on paper, all will come. Under thy hand. Learn, therefore, and more smoothly. More clearly wilt thou take, my son, upon thee. The cares of state. Semyon Godunov enters. But there comes Godunov. Bringing reports to me. To Senya, go to thy chamber. Dearest, farewell, my child. God comfort thee. Exeunt Senya and nurse. What news hast thou for me, Semyon Nikitich? Semyon G. Today at dawn the butler of Prince Shusky. And Pushkin's servant brought me information. Tsar. Well? Semyon G. In the first place Pushkin's man deposed. That yestermorn came to his house from Krakow. A courier, who within an hour was sent. Without a letter back. Tsar. Arrest the courier. Semyon G. Some are already sent to overtake him. Tsar. And what of Shusky? Semyon G. Last night he entertained. His friends, the Baturlins, both Miloslavskis. And Saltikov, with Pushkin and some others. They parted late. Pushkin alone remained. Closeted with his host and talked with him. A long time more. Tsar. For Shusky send forthwith. Semyon G. Sire, he is here already. Tsar. Call him hither. Exit Semyon Godunov. Dealings with Lithuania? What means this? I like not the seditious race of Pushkins. Nor must I trust in Shusky, obsequious. But bold and wily. Enter Shusky. Prince, I must speak with thee. But thou thyself, it seems, hast business with me. And I would listen first to thee. Shusky. Yea, sire. It is my duty to convey to thee. Grave news. Tsar. I listen. Shusky. Sato voce, pointing to Fyodor. But, sire. Tsar. The Tsarevich. May learn what her prince Shusky knoweth. Speak. Shusky. My liege, from Lithuania there have come. Tidings to us. Tsar. Are they not those same tidings? Which yestereve a courier bore to Pushkin? Shusky. Nothing is hidden from him, sire, I thought. Thou knewst not yet this secret. Tsar. Let not that. Trouble thee, prince. I fain would scrutinize. Thy information. Else we shall not learn. The actual truth. Shusky. I know this only, sire. In Krakow a pretender hath appeared. The king and nobles back him. Tsar. What say they? And who is this pretender? Shusky. I know not. Tsar. But wherein is he dangerous? Shusky. Verily. Thy state, my liege, is firm, by graciousness. Zeal, bounty, thou hast won the filial love. Of all thy slaves, but thou thyself dost know. The mob is thoughtless, changeable, rebellious. Credulous, lightly given to vain hope. Obedient to each momentary impulse. To truth deaf and indifferent, it feedeth. On fables, shameless boldness pleaseth it. So, if this unknown vagabond should cross. The Lithuanian border, Dmitri's name. Raised from the grave will gain him a whole crowd. Of fools. Tsar. Dmitri's? What? That child's? Dmitri's? Withdraw, Tsarevich. Shusky. He flushed, there'll be a storm. Theater. Suffer me, sire. Tsar. Impossible, 
My son. Go, go. Exit theater. Dimitri's name. Shusky. Then he knew nothing. Tsar. Listen. Take steps this very hour that Russia. Be fenced by barriers from Lithuania. That not a single soul pass o'er the border. That not a hair run o'er to us from Poland. Nor crow fly here from Krakow. Away. Shusky. I go. Tsar. Stay. Is it not a fact that this report is artfully concocted? Hast ever heard that dead men have arisen from their graves to question czars, legitimate czars, appointed, chosen by the voice of all the people, crowned by the great patriarch? Is it not laughable? Eh? What? Why locks thou not thereat? Shusky. I, sire? Tsar. Hark, Prince Vasily, when first I learned this child. Had been. This child had somehow lost its life. Twas thou I sent to search the matter out. Now by the cross and God I do adjure thee. Declare to me the truth upon thy conscience. Didst recognize the slaughtered boy, wast not. A substitute? Reply. Shusky. I swear to thee. Tsar. Nay, Shusky, swear not, but reply, was it? Indeed Dmitri? Shusky. He. Tsar. Consider, Prince. I promise clemency, I will not punish. With vain disgrace a lie that's past. But if. Thou now beguile me, then by my son's head. I swear, an evil fate shall overtake thee. Requital such that Tsar Ivan Vasilievich shall shudder in his grave with horror of it. Shusky. In punishment no terror lies, the terror. Doth lie in thy disfavor, in thy presence. Dare I use cunning? Could I deceive myself? So blindly as not recognize Dimitri? Three days in the cathedral did I visit. His corpse, escorted thither by all uglitch. Around him thirteen bodies lay of those slain by the people, and on them corruption. Already had set in perceptibly. But lo! The childish face of the Tsarevich was bright and fresh and quiet as if asleep. The deep gash had congealed not, nor the lines of his face even altered. No, my liege. There is no doubt, Dmitri sleeps in the grave. Tsar. Enough, withdraw. Exit Shusky. I choke. Let me get my breath. I felt it. All my blood surged to my face. And heavily fell back. So that is why. For thirteen years together I have dreamed. Ever about the murdered child. Yes, yes. Tis that. Now I perceive. But who is he? My terrible antagonist? Who is it? Opposeth me? An empty name, a shadow. Can it be a shade shall tear from me the purple? A sound deprive my children of succession? Fool that I was! Of what was I afraid? Blow on this phantom! And it is no more! So, I am fast resolved, I'll show no sign! Of fear, but nothing must be held in scorn! Ah! Heavy art thou, crown of Monomac! Krakow! House of Vishnevetsky! The pretender and a Catholic priest! Pretender! Nay, father! there will be no trouble. I know. The spirit of my people, piety, does not run wild in them, their czar's example, to them as sacred. Furthermore, the people, are always tolerant. I warrant you. Before two years my people all, and all, the Eastern Church, will recognize the power, of Peter's vicar, priest. May Saint Ignatius aid thee, when other times shall come. Meanwhile, Tsarevich, hide in thy soul the seed of heavenly blessing. Religious duty bids us oft dissemble. Before the blabbing world, the people judge. Thy words, thy deeds, God only sees thy motives. Pretender. Amen. Who's there? Enter a servant. Say that we will receive them. The doors are opened. A crowd of Russians and Poles enters. Comrades. Tomorrow we depart from Krakow. Manishek, with thee for three days in Sambor. I'll stay. 
I know thy hospitable castle. Both shines in splendid stateliness, and glories. In its young mistress, there I hope to see. Charming Marina. And ye, my friends, ye, Russia. And Lithuania, ye who have upraised. Fraternal banners against a common foe. Against mine enemy, yon crafty villain. Ye sons of Slavs, speedily will I lead. Your dread battalions to the longed for conflict. But soft. Methinks among you I descry. New faces. Gabriel P. They have come to beg for sword. And service with your grace. Pretender. Welcome, my lads. You are friends to me. But tell me, Pushkin, who? Is this fine fellow? Pushkin. Prince Kurbsky. Pretender. To Kurbsky. A famous name. Art kinsman to the hero of Kazan? Kurbsky. His son. Pretender. Liveth he still? Kurbsky. Nay, he is dead. Pretender. A noble soul. A man of war and counsel. But from the time when he appeared beneath. The ancient town Olgin with the Lithuanians. Hardy avenger of his injuries. Rumor hath held her tongue concerning him. Kurbsky. My father led the remnant of his life. On lands bestowed upon him by Batori. There, in Volhynia, solitary and quiet. Sought consolation for himself in studies. But peaceful labor did not comfort him. He ne'er forgot the home of his young days. And to the end pined for it. Pretender. Hapless chieftain. How brightly shone the dawn of his resounding and stormy life. Glad am I, noble knight, that now his blood is reconciled in thee, to his fatherland. The faults of fathers must not be called to mind. Peace to their grave. Approach. Give me thy hand. Is it not strange? The son of Kurbsky to the throne is leading, whom? Whom but Ivan's own son? All favors me. People and fate alike. Say, who art thou? A Pole. Sobanski, a free noble. Pretender. Praise and honor. Attend thee, child of liberty. Give him. A third of his full pay beforehand. Who? Are these? On them I recognize the dress. Of my own country. These are ours. Khrushchev. Bows low. Yea, sire. Our father. We are thralls of thine, devoted and persecuted, we have fled from Moscow. Disgraced, to thee our Tsar, and for thy sake, are ready to lay down our lives, our corpses, shall be for thee steps to the royal throne. Pretender, take heart, innocent sufferers, only let me reach Moscow, and, once there, Boris shall settle some scores with me and you. What news of Moscow? Khrushchev. As yet all there is quiet. But already. The folk have got to know that the Tsarevich. Was saved. Already everywhere as read. Thy proclamation. All are waiting for thee. Not long ago Boris sent two boyars. To execution merely because in secret. They drank thy health. Pretender. O oh, hapless, good boyars. But blood for blood. And woe to Godunov. What do they say of him? Khrushchev. He has withdrawn. Into his gloomy palace. He is grim. And somber. Executions loom ahead. But sickness gnaws him. Hardly hath he strength. To drag himself along, and, it is thought. His last hour is already not far off. Pretender. A speedy death I wish him, as becomes. A great-souled foe to wish. If not, then woe. To the miscreant, and whom doth he intend? To name as his successor? Khrushchev. He shows not. His purposes, but it would seem he destines. Theodor, his young son, to be our czar. Pretender. His reckonings, maybe, will yet prove wrong. Who art thou? Karela. A Cossack. From the dawn I am sent. To thee, from the free troops, from the brave hetman, from upper and lower regions of the Cossacks, to look upon thy bright and royal eyes, 
and tender thee their homage. Pretender. Well I knew. The men of dawn, I doubted not to see. The Cossack hetman in my ranks. We thank. Our army of the dawn. Today, we know. The Cossacks are unjustly persecuted. Oppressed. But if God grant us to ascend. The throne of our forefathers, then as of yore. We'll gratify the free and faithful dawn. Poet. Approaches. Bowing low, and taking Gregory by the hem of his caftan. Great prince, illustrious offspring of a king. Pretender. What wouldst thou? Poet. Condescendingly accept. This poor fruit of my earnest toil. Pretender. What see I? Verses in Latin. Blessed a hundredfold. The tie of sword and lyre, the selfsame laurel. Binds them in friendship. I was born beneath. A northern sky, but yet the Latin muse. To me as a familiar voice, I love. The blossoms of Parnassus, I believe. The prophecies of singers. Not in vain. The ecstasy boils in their flaming breast. Action is hallowed, being glorified. Beforehand by the poets. Approach, my friend. In memory of me accept this gift. Gives him a ring. When fate fulfills for me her covenant. When I assume the crown of my forefathers. I hope again to hear the measured tones. Of thy sweet voice, and thy inspired lay. Musa gloriam coronet, gloriac musam. And so, friends, till tomorrow, au revoir. All. Forward. Long live Dimitri. Forward, forward. Long live Dimitri, the great prince of Moscow. Castle of the Governor. Manishek in Sambor. Dressing room of Marina. Marina, Ruzia, dressing her, serving women. Marina. Before a mirror. Now then, is it ready? Cannot. You make haste? Ruzia. I pray you first to make the difficult choice. Will you the necklace wear of pearls, or else? The emerald half moon? Marina. My diamond crown. Ruzia. Splendid. Do you remember that you wore it? When to the palace you were pleased to go. They say that at the ball your gracious highness. Shone like the sun. Men sighed. Fair ladies whispered. Twas then that for the first time young Kotkovich. Beheld you. He who after shot himself. And whosoever looked on you. They say. That instant fell in love. Marina. Can't you be quicker? Ruzia. At once. Today your father counts upon you. Twas not for not the young Tsarevich saw you. He could not hide his rapture. Wounded he is. Already, so it only needs to deal him. A resolute blow, and instantly, my lady. He'll be in love with you. Tis now a month. Since, quitting Krakow, heedless of the war. And throne of Moscow, he has feasted here. Your guest, enraging Poles alike and Russians. Heavens! Shall I ever live to see the day? Say, you will not, when to his capital. Dmitri leads the Queen of Moscow, say. You'll not forsake me? Marina. Dost thou truly think? I shall be queen? Ruzia. Who, if not you? Who here? Dares to compare in beauty with my mistress? The race of Manishek never yet has yielded. To any. In intellect you are beyond. All praise, happy the suitor whom your glance honors with its regard, who wins your heart. Whoe'er he be, be he our king, the Dauphin of France, or even this our poor Tsarevich. God knows who, God knows whence. Marina, the very son of the Tsar, and so confessed by the whole world. Ruzia, and yet last winter he was but a servant. In the house of Vishnevetsky, Marina. He was hiding. Ruzia. I do not question it, but still do you know. What people say about him. That perhaps. He is a deacon run away from Moscow. In his own district a notorious rogue. Marina. What nonsense. Ruzia. Oh, I do not credit it. I only say he ought to bless his fate. That you have so preferred him to the others. 
Waiting woman. Runs in. The guests have come already. Marina. There you see. You're ready to chatter silliness till daybreak. Meanwhile I am not dressed. Ruzia. Within a moment. Twill be quite ready. The waiting women bustle. Marina. Aside. I must find out all. A suite of lighted rooms. Vishnevetsky, Manishek. Manishek. With none but my Marina doth he speak. With no one else consorteth, and that business. Looks dreadfully like marriage. Now confess. Didst ever think my daughter would be a queen? Vishnevetsky. Tis wonderful. And, Manishek, didst thou think? My servant would ascend the throne of Moscow? Manishek. And what a girl, look you, is my Marina. I merely hinted to her. Now, be careful. Let not Dmitri slip, and lo. Already. He is completely tangled in her toils. The band plays a polonaise. The pretender and Marina advance as the first couple. Marina. Sato voce to Dimitri. Tomorrow evening at eleven, beside. The fountain in the avenue of lime trees. They walk off. A second couple. Cavalier. What can Dimitri see in her? Dame. How say you? She is a beauty. Cavalier. Yes, a marble nymph. Eyes, lips, devoid of life, without a smile. A fresh couple. Dame. He is not handsome, but his eyes are pleasing. And one can see he is of royal birth. A fresh couple. Dame. When will the army march? Cavalier. When the Tsarevich orders it, we are ready, but tis clear. The lady Manishek and Dmitri mean to keep us prisoners here. Dame. A pleasant durance. Cavalier. Truly, if you. They walk off, the rooms become empty. Manishek. We old ones dance no longer. The sound of music lures us not, we press not. Nor kiss the hands of charmers, ah. My friend. I've not forgotten the old pranks. Things now. Are not what once they were, what once they were. Youth, I'll be sworn, is not so bold, nor beauty. So lively. Everything, confess, my friend. Has somehow become dull. So let us leave them. My comrade, let us go and find a flask. Of old Hungarian overgrown with mold. Let's bid my butler open an old bottle. And in a quiet corner, tete a tete. Let's drain a draft, a stream as thick as fat. And while we're so engaged, let's think things over. Let us go, brother. Vishnevetsky. Yes, my friend, let's go. The garden. The fountain. Pretender. Enters. Here is the fountain. Hither will she come. I was not born a coward, I have seen. Death near at hand, and face to face with death. My spirit hath not blenched. A lifelong dungeon. Hath threatened me, I have been close pursued. And yet my spirit quailed not, and by boldness. I have escaped captivity. But what? Is this which now constricts my breath? What means? This overpowering tremor, or this quivering? Of tense desire? No, this is fear. All day. I have waited for this secret meeting, pondered. On all that I should say to her, how best. I might enmesh Marina's haughty mind. Calling her Queen of Moscow. But the hour. Has come, and I remember not, I cannot. Recall the speeches I have learned by rote. Love puts imagination to confusion. But something there gleamed suddenly, a rustling. Hush, no, it was the moon's deceitful light. It was the rustling of the breeze. Marina. Enters. Zarevich. Pretender. Tis she. Now all the blood in me stands still. Marina. Dmitri. Is it thou? Pretender. Bewitching voice. Goes to her. Is it thou, at last? Is it thou I see, alone? With me, beneath the roof of quiet night? How slowly passed the tedious day. How slowly. The glow of evening died away. How long. I have waited in the gloom of night. Marina. The hours. 
are flitting fast, and time is precious to me. I did not grant a meeting here to thee, to listen to a lover's tender speeches. No need of words. I well believe thou lovest. But listen, with thy stormy, doubtful fate, I have resolved to join my own, but one thing. Dimitri, I require, I claim that thou, disclose to me thy secret hopes, thy plans, even thy fears, that hand in hand with thee. I may confront life boldly, not in blindness, of childlike ignorance, not as the slave, and plaything of my husband's light desires, thy speechless concubine, but as thy spouse, and worthy helpmate of the Tsar of Moscow. Pretender. Oh, if it be only for one short hour. Forget the cares and troubles of my fate. Forget tis the Tsarevich whom thou seest. Before thee. Oh, behold in me, Marina. A lover, by thee chosen, happy only. In thy regard. Oh, listen to the prayers. Of love. Grant me to utter all wherewith. My heart is full. Marina. Prince, this is not the time. Thou loiterest, and meanwhile the devotion. Of thine adherence cooleth. Hour by hour. Danger becomes more dangerous, difficulties. More difficult, already dubious rumors. Are current, novelty already takes. The place of novelty, and Godunov. Adopts his measures. Pretender. What is Godunov? Is thy sweet love, my only blessedness? Swayed by Boris? Nay, nay. Indifferently. I now regard his throne, his kingly power. Thy love, without it what to me is life. And glory's glitter, and the state of Russia? On the dull step, in a poor mud hut, thou. Thou wilt requite me for the kingly crown. Thy love. Marina. For shame. Forget not. Prince, thy high, and sacred destiny, thy dignity, should be to thee more dear than all the joys, of life and its allurements, it thou canst not, with anything compare, not to a boy, insanely boiling, captured by my beauty, but to the heir of Moscow's throne give I, my hand in solemn wise, to the Tsarevich, rescued by destiny, pretender, torture me not, Charming Marina, say not that twas my rank, and not myself that thou didst choose. Marina, thou knowest not how sorely thou dost wound my heart thereby. What if, O oh fearful doubt, dash, say, if blind destiny had not assigned me a kingly birth, if I were not indeed son of Ivan, were not this boy, so long, forgotten by the world, say, then wouldst thou have loved me? Marina, thou art Dimitri, and aught else. Thou canst not be, it is not possible, for me to love another. Pretender. Nay. Enough. I have no wish to share with a dead body. A mistress who belongs to him, I have done. With counterfeiting, and will tell the truth. No, then, that thy Dimitri long ago. Perished, was buried and will not rise again. And dost thou wish to know what man I am? Well, I will tell thee. I am, a poor monk, grown weary of monastic servitude. I pondered, neath the cowl my bold design, made ready for the world a miracle, and from my cell at last fled to the Cossacks. To their wild hovels, there I learned to handle. Both steeds and swords, I showed myself to you. I called myself Dimitri, and deceived. The brainless poles. What sayst thou, proud Marina? Art thou content with my confession? Why? Dost thou keep silence? Marina. O oh shame. O oh woe as me. Silence. Pretender. Sato voce. O oh whither hath a fit of anger led me? The happiness devised with so much labor. I have perchance, destroyed forever. Idiot! What have I done? Aloud, I see thou art ashamed. Of love not princely, so pronounce on me. The fatal word, my fate is in thy hands. Decide, I wait. Falls on his knees. Marina. Rise, poor pretender. 
thinkst thou, to please with genuflex on my vain heart, as if I were a weak, confiding girl? You err, my friend, prone at my feet I've seen. Knights and counts nobly born, but not for this. Did I reject their prayers, that a poor monk, pretender, rises? Scorn not the young pretender, noble virtues. May lie perchance in him, virtues well worthy. Of Moscow's throne, even of thy priceless hand. Marina. Say of a shameful noose, insolent wretch. Pretender. I am to blame, carried away by pride. I have deceived God and the kings, have lied. To the world, but it is not for thee, Marina. To judge me, I am guiltless before thee. No, I could not deceive thee. Thou to me. Wast the one sacred being, before thee. I dared not to dissemble, love alone. Love, jealous, blind, constrained me to tell all. Marina. What's that to boast of, idiot? Who demanded? Confession of thee? If thou, a nameless vagrant, couldst wonderfully blind two nations, then, at least thou shouldst have merited success, and thy bold fraud secured, by constant, deep, and lasting secrecy. Say, can I yield, myself to thee, can I, forgetting rank, and maiden modesty, unite my fate, with thine, when thou thyself impetuously, dost thus with such simplicity reveal, thy shame? It was from love he blabbed to me, I marvel wherefore thou hast not from friendship, disclosed thyself ere now before my father, or else before our king from joy, or else, before Prince Vishnevetsky from the zeal, of a devoted servant, pretender, I swear to thee, that thou alone wast able to extort, my heart's confession, I swear to thee that never, nowhere, not in the feast, not in the cup, of folly, not in friendly confidence, not neath the knife nor tortures of the rack, shall my tongue give away these weighty secrets. Marina, thou swearest, then I must believe, believe, of course, but may I learn by what thou swearest? Is it not by the name of God, as suits, the Jesuit's devout adopted son, or by thy honor as a high-born knight, or, maybe, by thy royal word alone. As a king's son? Is it not so? Declare. Pretender. Proudly. The phantom of the terrible hath made me. His son, from out the sepulchre hath named me. Dimitri, hath stirred up the people round me. And hath consigned Boris to be my victim. I am Tsarevich. Enough. Twere shame for me. To stoop before a haughty Polish dame. Farewell forever, the game of bloody war. The wide cares of my destiny, will smother. I hope, the pangs of love. Oh, when the heat, of shameful passion is o'erspent, how then, shall I detest thee? Now I leave thee, ruin. Or else a crown, awaits my head in Russia. Whether I meet with death as fits a soldier, in honorable fight, or as a miscreant, upon the public scaffold, thou shalt not be my companion, nor shalt share with me my fate, but it may be thou shalt regret the destiny thou hast refused. Marina, but what, if I expose beforehand thy bold fraud to all men? Pretender, dost thou think I fear thee? Think'st thou, they will believe a Polish maiden more than Russia's own Tsarevich? No, proud lady, that neither king, nor pope, nor nobles trouble. Whether my words be true, whether I be Dmitri or another, what care they? But I provide a pretext for revolt and war, and this is all they need, and thee, rebellious one, believe me, they will force to hold thy peace. Farewell. Marina. Tsarevich, stay. At last I hear the speech not of a boy, but of a man. It reconciles me to thee. Prince, I forget thy senseless outburst, see. Again Dimitri. Listen, now is the time. Hasten, delay no more, lead on thy troops. Quickly to Moscow, 
purge the Kremlin, take thy seat upon the throne of Moscow, then send me the nuptial envoy, but God hears me, until thy foot be planted on its steps, until by thee Boris be overthrown. I am not one to listen to love speeches. Pretender. No, easier far to strive with Godanov, or play false with the Jesuits of the court, than with a woman. Deuce take them, they're beyond my power. She twists, and coils, and crawls, slips out of hand, she hisses, threatens, bites. Ah, serpent! Serpent! Twas not for nothing that I trembled. She well nigh ruined me, but I'm resolved. At daybreak I will put my troops in motion. The Lithuanian Frontier. October 16, 1604. Prince Kerbsky and Pretender, both on horseback. Troops approach the frontier. Kerbsky. Galloping at their head. There, there it is, there is the Russian frontier. Fatherland. Holy Russia. I am thine. With scorn from off my clothing now I shake. The foreign dust, and greedily I drink. New air, it is my native air. O Father. Thy soul hath now been solaced, in the grave. Thy bones, disgraced, thrill with a sudden joy. Again doth flash our old ancestral sword. This glorious sword, the dread of dark Kazan. This good sword, servant of the Tsars of Moscow. Now will it revel in its feast of slaughter. Serving the master of its hopes. Pretender. Moves quietly with bowed head. How happy. Is he. How flushed with gladness and with glory. His stainless soul. Brave knight, I envy thee. The son of Kerbsky, nurtured in exile. Forgetting all the wrongs borne by thy father. Redeeming his transgression in the grave. Ready art thou for the son of great Ivan. To shed thy blood, to give the fatherland. Its lawful czar. Righteous art thou, thy soul. Should flame with joy. Kerbsky. And dost not thou likewise. Rejoice in spirit? There lies our Russia, she. Is thine, Tsarevich. There thy people's hearts are waiting for thee, there thy Moscow waits. Thy Kremlin, thy dominion. Pretender. Russian blood. O Kerbsky, first must flow. Thou for the Tsar. Hast drawn the sword, thou art stainless, but I lead you. Against your brothers, I am summoning. Lithuania against Russia, I am showing. To foes the longed for way to beauteous Moscow. But let my sin fall not on me, but thee. Boris, the regicide. Forward. Set on. Kerbsky. Forward. Advance. And woe to Godunov. They gallop. The troops cross the frontier. The council of the Tsar. The Tsar, the patriarch and boyars. Tsar. Is it possible? An unfrocked monk against us. Leads rascal troops. A truant friar dares right. Threats to us. Then tis time to tame the madman. Trubetskoy, set thou forth, and thou Basmanov. My zealous governors need help. Chernikov. Already by the rebel as besieged. Rescue the city and citizens. Basmanov. Three months. Shall not pass, sire, ere even rumor's tongue. Shall cease to speak of the pretender, caged in iron, like a wild beast from oversea. We'll hail him into Moscow, I swear by God. Exit with Trubetskoy. Tsar. The Lord of Sweden hath by envoys tendered alliance to me. But we have no need to lean on foreign aid, we have enough of our own warlike people to repel. Traitors and Poles. I have refused. Shelkolov. In every district to the governors. Send edicts, that they mount their steeds, and send the people as of old on service, likewise. Ride to the monasteries, and there enlist the servants of the churchmen. In days of old, when danger faced our country, hermits freely went into battle. It is not now our wish to trouble them. No, let them pray for us. Such is the Tsar's decree, such the resolve. 
of his boyars. And now a weighty question. We shall determine. Ye know how everywhere. The insolent pretender hath spread abroad. His artful rumors, letters everywhere. By him distributed, have sowed alarm. And doubt, seditious whispers to and fro. Pass in the marketplaces, minds are seething. We needs must cool them. Gladly would I refrain. From executions, but by what means and how? That we will now determine. Holy Father. Thou first declare thy thought. Patriarch. The Blessed One. The All Highest, hath instilled into thy soul. Great Lord, the spirit of kindness and meek patience. Thou wishest not perdition for the sinner. Thou wilt wait quietly, until delusion. Shall pass away, for pass away it will. And truth's eternal sun will dawn on all. Thy faithful Bettisman, one in worldly matters. No prudent judge, ventures today to offer. His voice to thee. This offspring of the devil. This unfrocked monk, has known how to appear. Dimitri to the people. Shamelessly. He clothed himself with the name of the Tsarevich. As with a stolen vestment. It only needs. To tear it off, and he'll be put to shame. By his own nakedness. The means thereto. God hath himself supplied. No, sire, six years. Since then have fled. Twas in that very year. When to the seat of sovereignty the Lord. Anointed thee. There came to me one evening. A simple shepherd, a venerable old man, who told me a strange secret. In my young days, he said, I lost my sight, and thenceforth knew not, nor day, nor night, till my old age, in vain. I plied myself with herbs and secret spells. In vain did I resort in adoration to the great wonder workers in the cloister, bathed my dark eyes in vain with healing water. From out the holy wells, the Lord vouchsafed not, healing to me. Then lost I hope at last, and grew accustomed to my darkness. Even, slumber showed not to me things visible, only of sounds I dreamed. Once in deep sleep, I hear a childish voice, it speaks to me. Back quote arise, grandfather, go to Uglitch town, to the cathedral of transfiguration. There pray over my grave. The Lord is gracious. And I shall pardon thee. Backquote, but who art thou? I asked the childish voice. Backquote, I am the Tsarevich. Dimitri, whom the heavenly Tsar hath taken. Into his angel band, and I am now. A mighty wonder worker. Go, old man. I woke, and pondered. What is this? Maybe. God will in very deed vouchsafe to me. Belated healing. I will go. I bent. My footsteps to the distant road. I reached. Uglitch, repair unto the holy minster. Hear mass, and, glowing with zealous soul, I weep. Sweetly, as if the blindness from mine eyes. Were flowing out in tears. And when the people. Began to leave, to my grandson I said. Backquote lead me, Ivan, to the grave of the Tsarevich. Dimitri, the boy led me, and I scarce. Had shaped before the grave a silent prayer. When sight illumed my eyeballs, I beheld. The light of God, my grandson, and the tomb. That is the tale, sire, which the old man told. General agitation. In the course of this speech. Boris several times wipes his face with his handkerchief. To Uglitch then I sent, where it was learned, that many sufferers had found likewise, deliverance at the grave of the Tsarevich. This is my counsel, to the Kremlin send, the sacred relics, place them in the cathedral, of the archangel, clearly will the people, see then the godless villain's fraud, the might, of the fiends will vanish as a cloud of dust. Silence. Prince Shusky. What mortal, Holy Father, knoweth the ways of the All Highest? Tis not for me to judge him. Untainted sleep and power of wonder working. He may upon the child's remains bestow. But vulgar rumor must dispassionately and diligently be tested. Is it for us? 
in stormy times of insurrection, to weigh so great a matter? Will men not say, that insolently we made of sacred things, a worldly instrument? Even now the people, sway senselessly this way and that, even now. There are enough already of loud rumors. This is no time to vex the people's minds. With aught so unexpected, grave, and strange. I myself see tis needful to demolish. The rumor spread abroad by the unfrocked monk. But for this end other and simpler means. Will serve. Therefore, when it shall please thee, sire. I will myself appear in public places. I will persuade, exhort away this madness. And will expose the vagabond's vile fraud. Tsar. So be it. My lord patriarch, I pray thee. Go with us to the palace, where today. I must converse with thee. Exeunt. All the boyars follow them. First boyar. Sato voce to another. Didst mark how pale. Our sovereign turned. How from his face there poured. A mighty sweat? Second boyar. I durst not, I confess. Uplift mine eyes, nor breathe, nor even stir. First boyar. Prince Shusky has pulled it through. A. Splendid fellow. A plain near Novgorod Seversk. December 21, 1604. A battle. Soldiers. Run in disorder. Woe, woe. The Tsarevich. The Poles. There they are. There they are. Captains enter. Mars Herit and Walther Rosen. Mars Herit. Whither, whither? Allens. Go back. One of the fugitives. You go back, if you like, cursed. Infidel. Mars Herit. Qua, qua? Another. Kava. Kva. You like, you frog from over the sea, to croak at the Russian Tsarevich, but we, we are. Orthodox. Mars Herit. Kest ce a dire, orthodox. Sacris go. Medita canale. Mordu, mine hair, gin rage, on. Derate k ca na pa de bras poor frapper, ca na k day. Hombies poor fewer. Rosin. S east shande. Mars herit. Venter saint gris. Je ne bouge plus dune pa. Puisque le vin est tire, il faut le boire. Keen dites vu. Mine hair? Rosin. Sai haben rect. Mars Herit. Tudu, ill y fate shod. C e diable de pretender. Come ils lapellant, est un booger, qui a du. Poil o call, keen penses vu, mine hair? Rosin. Ya. Ja. Mars Herit. He. Voice donk, voice donk. Laction s'engage. Sir les derrières de l'ennemi. C e doit etre le brave. Basmanov, qui aurait fait une sortie. Rosin. Ich glaube das. Enter Germans. Mars Herit. Ha, ha. Voici nos Alamans. Messieurs. Mein Herr, dites leur donc de se railier et, sacre bleu. Chargens. Rosin. Sehr gut. Halt. The Germans halt. Marsh. The Germans. They march. Hilf got. Fight. The Russians flee again. Poles. Victory. Victory. Glory to the Tsar Dmitri. Dmitri. On horseback. Cease fighting. We have. Conquered. Enough. Spare Russian blood. Cease fighting. Open space in front of the cathedral in Moscow. The people. One of the people. Will the Tsar soon come out of the cathedral? Another. The mass is ended. Now the Te Deum is going on. The first. What? Have they already cursed him? The second. I stood in the porch and heard how the deacon cried out, Grishka Otrepiev as anathema. The first. Let him curse to his heart's content. The Tsarevich has nothing to do with the Otrepiev. The second. But they are now singing mass for the repose of the soul of the Tsarevich. The first. What? A mass for the dead sung for a living. 
man? They'll suffer for it, the godless wretches. A third. Hissed. A sound. Is it not the czar? A fourth. No, it is the idiot. An idiot enters, in an iron cap, hung round with chains, surrounded by boys. The boys. Nick, Nick, iron nightcap. T-R-R-R-R. Old woman. Let him be, you young devils. Innocent one. Pray thou for me a sinner. Idiot. Give, give, give a penny. Old woman. There is a penny for thee, remember me in. Thy prayers. Idiot. Seats himself on the ground and sings smiley face. The moon sails on. The kitten cries. Nick, arise. Pray to God. The boys surround him again. One of them. How do you do, Nick? Why don't you? Take off your cap? Wraps him on the iron cap. How it rings. Idiot. But I have got a penny. Boys. That's not true. Now, show it. They snatch the penny and run away. Idiot. Weeps. They have taken my penny, they are. Hurting Nick. The people. The czar, the czar is coming. The czar comes out from the cathedral. A boyar in front of him scatters alms among the poor. Boyars. Idiot. Boris, Boris. The boys are hurting Nick. Czar. Give him alms. What is he crying for? Idiot. The boys are hurting me. Give orders to slay. Them, as thou sle west the little Tsarevich. Boyars. Go away, fool. Seize the fool. Tsar. Leave him alone. Pray thou for me, Nick. Exit. Idiot. To himself. No, no. It is impossible to pray for. Tsar Herod, the mother of God forbids it. Siesk. The pretender, surrounded by his supporters. Pretender. Where is the prisoner? A pole. Here. Pretender. Call him before me. A Russian prisoner enters. Who art thou? Prisoner. Rajnov, a nobleman of Moscow. Pretender. Hast long been in the service? Prisoner. About a month. Pretender. Art not ashamed, Rajnov, that thou hast drawn. The sword against me? Prisoner. What else could I do? Twas not our fault. Pretender. Didst fight beneath the walls. Of Seversk? Prisoner. Twas two weeks after the battle. I came from Moscow. Pretender. What of Godunov? Prisoner. The bottle's loss, Emstislavsky's wound, hath caused him. Much apprehension. Shusky he hath sent. To take command. Pretender. But why hath he recalled? Basmanov unto Moscow? Prisoner. The Tsar rewarded. His services with honor and with gold. Basmanov in the council of the Tsar. Now sits. Pretender. The army had more need of him. Well, how go things in Moscow? Prisoner. All is quiet. Thank God. Pretender. Say, do they look for me? Prisoner. God knows. They dare not talk too much there now. Of some. The tongues have been cut off, of others even. The heads. It is a fearsome state of things. Each day an execution. All the prisons. Are crammed. Wherever two or three forgather. In public places, instantly a spy. Worms himself in, the czar himself examines. At leisure the denouncers. It is just. Sheer misery, so silence is the best. Pretender. An enviable life for the czar's people. Well, how about the army? Prisoner. What of them? Clothed and full-fed they are content with all. Pretender. But is there much of it? Prisoner. God knows. Pretender. All told. Will there be thirty thousand? Prisoner. Yes, twill run. Even to fifty thousand. The pretender reflects. Those around him glance at one another. Pretender. Well. Of me. What say they in your camp? Prisoner. Your graciousness. They speak of. Say that thou, sire, be not wrath. Art a thief. 
but a fine fellow. Pretender. Laughing. Even so. I'll prove myself to them indeed. My friends. We will not wait for Shusky. I wish you joy. Tomorrow, battle. Exit. All. Long life to Dimitri. A pole. Tomorrow, battle. They are 50,000. And we scarce 15,000. He is mad. Another. That's nothing, friend. A single pole can challenge. 500 Muscovites. Prisoner. Yes, thou mayest challenge. But when it comes to fighting, then, thou braggart. Thou'll run away. Pull. If thou hadst had a sword. Insolent prisoner. Then, pointing to his sword, with this I'd soon. Have vanquished thee. Prisoner. A Russian can make shift. Without a sword. How like you this, shows his fist, you fool. The pole looks at him haughtily and departs in silence. All laugh. A forest. Pretender and Pushkin. In the background lies a dying horse. Pretender. Ah, my poor horse. How gallantly he charged. Today in the last battle, and when wounded. How swiftly bore me. My poor horse. Pushkin. To himself. Well, here's. A great ado about a horse, when all. Our armies smashed to bits. Pretender. Listen. Perhaps. He's but exhausted by the loss of blood. And will recover. Pushkin. Nay, nay, he is dying. Pretender. Goes to his horse. My poor horse, what to do? Take off the bridle. And loose the girth. Let him at least die free. He unbridles and unsaddles the horse. Some poles enter. Good day to you, gentlemen. How I is it I see not. Kerbsky among you? I did note today. How to the thick of the fight he clove his path. Around the hero's sword, like swaying ears. Of corn, hosts throng, but higher than all of them. His blade was brandished, and his terrible cry. Drowned all cries else. Where is my knight? Pole. He fell. On the field of battle. Pretender. Honor to the brave. And peace be on his soul. How few unscathed. Are left us from the fight. Accursed Cossacks. Traitors and miscreants. You, you it is. Have ruined us. Not even for three minutes. To keep the foe at bay. I'll teach the villains. Every tenth man I'll hang. Brigands. Pushkin. Whoe'er. Be guilty. All the same we were clean worsted. Routed. Pretender. But yet we nearly conquered. Just. When I had dealt with their front rank, the Germans. Repulsed us utterly. But they're fine fellows. By God. Fine fellows. I love them for it. From them. I'll form an honorable troop. Pushkin. And where? Shall we now spend the night? Pretender. Why, here, in the forest. Why not this for our night quarters? At daybreak. We'll take the road, and dine in Rilska. Good night. He lies down, puts a saddle under his head, and falls asleep. Pushkin. A pleasant sleep, Zarevich. Smashed to bits. Rescued by flight alone, he is as careless. As a simple child, tis clear that providence protects him, and we, my friends, will not lose heart. Moscow. Palace of the Tsar. Boris. Basmanov. Tsar. He is vanquished, but what profit lies in that? We are crowned with a vain conquest, he has mustered. Again his scattered forces, and anew. Threatens us from the ramparts of Putovil. Meanwhile what are our heroes doing? They stand. At Krom, where from its rotten battlements. A band of Cossacks braves them. There is glory. No, I am ill content with them, thyself. I shall dispatch to take command of them. I give authority not to birth, but brains. Their pride of precedence, let it be wounded. The time has come for me to hold in scorn. The murmur of distinguished nobodies. And quash pernicious custom. Basmanov. I, my lord. 
blessed a hundredfold will be that day, when fire consumes the lists of noblemen, with their dissensions, their ancestral pride. Tsar, that day is not far off, let me but first subdue the insurrection of the people. Basmanov, why trouble about that? The people always are prone to secret treason, even so. The swift steed champs the bit, so doth the lad chafe at his father's ruling. But what then? The rider quietly controls the steed. The father sways the son. Tsar. Sometimes the horse doth throw the rider, nor is the son at all times. Quite neath the father's will, we can restrain the people only by unsleeping sternness. So thought Ivan, sagacious autocrat, and storm subduer, so his fierce grandson thought. No, no, kindness is lost upon the people. Act well, it thanks you not at all. Extort, and execute, twill be no worse for you. Enter a boyar. What now? Boyar. The foreign guests are come. Tsar. I go. To welcome them. Basmanov, wait, stay here. I still have need to speak, a word with thee. Exit. Basmanov. High sovereign spirit. God grant he may subdue. The accursed Otrepiev, and much, still much. Of good he'll do for Russia. A great thought. Within his mind has taken birth, it must not. Be suffered to grow cold. What a career. For me when the ancestral horn he breaks. Of the nobility. I have no rivals. In war. I shall stand closest to the throne. And it may chance, but what is that strange sound? Alarum. Boyars and court attendants run in disorder, meet each other and whisper. One. Fetch a physician. Another. Quickly to the patriarch. A third. He calls for the Tsarevich, the Tsarevich. A fourth. A confessor. Basmanov. What has happened? A fifth and sixth. The Tsar is ill. The Tsar is dying. Basmanov. Good God. A fifth. Upon the throne. He sat, and suddenly he fell. Blood gushed. From his mouth and ears. The Tsar is carried in on a chair. All the Tsar's household. All the boyars. Tsar. Let all depart, alone. Leave the Tsarevich with me. All withdraw, I am dying. Let us embrace. Farewell, my son, this hour. Thou wilt begin to reign. O God, my God. This hour I shall appear before thy presence. And have no time to purge my soul with shrift. But yet, my son, I feel thou art dearer to me. Then is my soul's salvation, be it so. A subject was I born, it seemed ordained. That I should die a subject in obscurity. Yet I attain to sovereignty, but how? Ask not. Enough that thou art innocent. In justice now thou'll reign, and I alone. Am answerable for all to God. Dear son. Cherish no false delusion, of thy free will. Blind not thyself. Store me the days wherein. Thou dost assume the crown. He is dangerous. This strange pretender, with a fearful name. He is armed. For many a year experienced. In rule, I could restrain revolt and treason. They quaked with fear before me, treachery. Dared not to raise its voice, but thou, a boy. An inexperienced ruler, how wilt thou? Govern amid the tempests, quench revolt. Shackle sedition? But God is great. He gives. Wisdom to youth, to weakness strength. Give ear. Firstly, select a steadfast counselor. Of cool, ripe years, loved of the people, honored. Mid the boyars for birth and fame, even Shusky. The army craves today a skillful leader. Basmanov send, and firmly bear the murmurs. Of the boyars. Thou from thy early years. Didst sit with me in council, thou dost know. The formal course of government, change not. Procedure. Custom as the soul of states. Of late I have been forced to reinstate. Bans, executions, these thou canst rescind. 
and they will bless thee, as they blessed thy uncle, when he obtained the throne of the terrible. At the same time, little by little, tighten, anew the reins of government, now slacken, but let them not slip from thy hands. Be gracious, accessible to foreigners, accept their service trustfully, preserve with strictness, the church's discipline, be taciturn, the royal voice must never lose itself, upon the air in emptiness, but like, a sacred bell must sound but to announce, some great disaster or great festival, dear son, thou art approaching to those years, when woman's beauty agitates our blood, preserve, preserve the sacred purity, of innocence and proud shamefacedness, he, who through passion has been wont to wallow, in vicious pleasures in his youthful days, becomes in manhood bloodthirsty and surly, his mind untimely darkens, of thy household, be always head, show honor to thy mother, but rule thy house thyself, thou art a man, and czar to boot, be loving to thy sister, thou wilt be left of her the sole protector, theater, on his knees, no, no, live on, my father, and reign long. Without thee both the folk and we will perish. Tsar. All is at end for me. Mine eyes grow dark. I feel the coldness of the grave. Enter the patriarch and prelates. Behind them all the boyars lead the Tsar ITSA by the hand. The Tsar EVNA is sobbing. Who's there? Ah, tis the vestment, so. The holy tonsure. The hour has struck. The Tsar becomes a monk. And the dark sepulcher will be my cell. Wait yet a little, my lord patriarch. I still am Tsar. Listen to me, boyars. To this my son I now commit the Tsardom. Do homage to Theodor. Basmanov, thou. And ye, my friends, on the grave's brink I pray you. To serve my son with zeal and rectitude. As yet he is both young and uncorrupted. Swear ye? Boyars. We swear. Tsar. I am content. Forgive me. Both my temptations and my sins, my willful. And secret injuries. Now, Holy Father. Approach thou. I am ready for the rite. The rite of the tonsure begins. The women are carried out swooning. A tent. Basmanov leads in Pushkin. Basmanov. Here enter, and speak freely. So to me. He sent thee. Pushkin. He doth offer thee his friendship. And the next place to his in the realm of Moscow. Basmanov. But even thus highly by theater am I. Already raised. The army I command. For me he scorned nobility of rank. And the wrath of the boyars. I have sworn to him. Allegiance. Pushkin. To the throne's lawful successor. Allegiance thou hast sworn, but what if one more lawful still be living? Basmanov. Listen, Pushkin. Enough of that. Tell me no idle tales. I know the man. Pushkin. Russia and Lithuania have long acknowledged him to be Dmitri. But, for the rest, I do not vouch for it. Perchance he is indeed the real Dmitri. Perchance but a pretender, only this. I know, that soon or late the son of Boris. Will yield Moscow to him. Basmanov. So long as I. Stand by the youthful Tsar, so long he will not. Forsake the throne. We have enough of troops. Thank God. With victory I will inspire them. And whom will you against me send, the Cossack? Karol or Manishek? Are your numbers many? In all, eight thousand. Pushkin. You mistake, they will not. Amount even to that. I say myself. Our army is mere trash, the Cossacks only. Rob villages, the Poles but brag and drink. The Russians, what shall I say? With you all not. Dissemble, but, Basmanov, dost thou know. Wherein our strength lies. Not in the army, no. Nor Polish aid, but in opinion, yes. In popular opinion. Dust remember. The triumph of Dmitri, dust remember. 
his peaceful conquests, when, without a blow, the docile towns surrendered, and the mob bound the recalcitrant leaders? Thou thyself sawst it, was it of their free will our troops fought with him? And when did they so? Boris was then supreme. But would they now? Nay, nay. It is too late to blow on the cold embers of this dispute, with all thy wits and firmness. Thou'll not withstand him. Were it not better for thee to furnish to our chief a wise example, proclaim Dmitri Tsar, and by that act, bind him your friend forever? How thinkest thou, Basmanov? Tomorrow thou shalt know. Pushkin. Resolve. Basmanov. Farewell. Pushkin. Ponder it well, Basmanov. Exit. Basmanov. He is right. Everywhere treason ripens. What shall I do? Wait, that the rebels may deliver me. In bonds to the Otrepiev? Had I not better. Forestall the stormy onset of the flood. Myself to, ah. But to forswear mine oath. Dishonor to deserve from age to age. The trust of my young sovereign to requite. With horrible betrayal. Tis a light thing. For a disgraced exile to meditate. Sedition and conspiracy, but I? Is it for me, the favorite of my lord? But death, but power, the people's miseries. He ponders. Here. Who is there? Whistles. A horse here. Sound the muster. Public square in Moscow. Pushkin enters, surrounded by the people. The people. The Tsarevich a boyar hath sent to us. Let's hear what the boyar will tell us. Hither. Hither. Pushkin. On a platform. Townsmen of Moscow. The Tsarevich. Bids me convey his greetings to you. He bows. Ye know. How divine providence saved the Tsarevich. From out the murderer's hands, he went to punish. His murderer, but God's judgment hath already. Struck down Boris. All Russia hath submitted. Unto Dmitri, with heartfelt repentance. Basmanov hath himself led forth his troops. To swear allegiance to him. In love, in peace. Dmitri comes to you. Would ye, to please. The house of Godunov, uplift a hand. Against the lawful Tsar, against the grandson. Of Monomak? The people. Not we. Pushkin. Townsmen of Moscow. The world well knows how much ye have endured. Under the rule of the cruel stranger, ban. Dishonor, executions, taxes, hardships. Hunger, all these ye have experienced. Dmitri is disposed to show you favor. Courtiers, boyars, state servants, soldiers, strangers. Merchants, and every honest man. Will ye. Be stubborn without reason, and in pride. Flee from his kindness? But he himself is coming. To his ancestral throne with dreadful escort. Provoke not ye the Tsar to wrath, fear God. And swear allegiance to the lawful ruler. Humble yourselves. Forthwith send to Dmitri. The metropolitan, deacons, boyars. And chosen men, that they may homage due. To their lord and father. Exit. Clamor of the people. The people. What is to be said? The boyar spake truth. Long live Dmitri, our father. A peasant on the platform. People. To the Kremlin. To the royal palace. The whelp of Boris go bind. The people. Rushing in a crowd. Bind, drown him. Hail. Dmitri. Perish the race of Godunov. The Kremlin. House of Boris. A guard on the staircase. Theater at a window. Beggar. Give alms, for Christ's sake. Guard. Go away, it is forbidden to speak to the prisoners. Theater. Go, old man, I am poorer than thou. Thou art at. Liberty. Senya, veiled, also comes to the window. One of the people. Brother and sister, poor children, like. Birds in a cage. Second person. Are you going to pity them? Accursed. Family. First person. 
The father was a villain, but the children are innocent. Second person. The apple does not fall far from the apple tree. Senya. Dear brother. Dear brother. I think the boyars are coming to us. Theater. That is Golitsyn, Mosulski. I do not know the others. Senya. Ah. Dear brother. My heart sinks. Golitsyn, Mosulski, Molchanov, and Sherefetinov. Behind them three archers. The people. Make way, make way, the boyars come. They enter the house. One of the people. What have they come for? Second. Most like to make Fyodor Godunov take the oath. Third. Very like. Hark. What a noise in the house. What an uproar. They are fighting. The people. Do you hear? A scream. That was a woman's voice. We will go up. We will go up. The doors are fastened. The cries cease. The noise continues. The doors are thrown open. Mosalsky appears on the staircase. Mosalsky. People. Maria Godunov and her son Fyodor have poisoned themselves. We have seen their dead bodies. The people are silent with horror. Why are ye silent? Cry, long live the Tsar Dmitry Ivanovich. The people are speechless. The end. Karaoke Books